Historic Boston Store, your news talk leader. WJT Well, good evening and welcome to Erie's newest talk radio program, Working Hands Radio. And uh, that intro song, One Headlight, uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. But I'd like to welcome all the folks in Erie that are tuned in tonight and uh, even those people that are maybe around the world on Facebook Live. So tonight we're in Erie, Pennsylvania, and we're broadcasting live from the historic Boston Store building in the heart of downtown Erie. And I can tell you, uh, from my generation, folks that have been around Erie, Pennsylvania, the Boston Store was just a big piece of the Erie uh, uh, downtown for many, many years. And I remember coming here as a ch- child uh, to go Christmas shopping, and I remember vividly the toy department, of course. But uh, now it's uh, radio stations on the bottom, Connoisseur Media is here, and the rest of the building, I believe, is uh, apartments. But we're also broadcasting from the historic call letters WJET. So this is all coming full circle for me because as a kid in Erie, Pennsylvania, this is what you listen to when you wanted to hear the latest hits. And back then, we were listening to the Beatles, and we were listening to the Rolling Stones, not the Rolling Stones, but the Doors. Uh, but Jet Radio, and if, a little fun fact, if, if you're not from Erie, um, Tom Hanks, the first movie he ever directed was called That Thing You Do, and WJT was uh, featured prominently in that movie. It was referred to as uh, Jet. We all called it Jet. So, quick intro. My name is Phil Kerner, and um, one of the reasons we might get some calls tonight from around the world is uh, my other job is uh, the tool and die guy. And uh, that's my moniker online. Uh, for the last several years, I've been recording tutorials and lessons on tool and die making and machining. Um, so I'm not only a tool maker, but I'm a teacher also. So I've been in manufacturing for over 40 years. And probably I added it up one night. You know, these hands have probably built about $20 million worth of products in my career. So manufacturing, it's in my family's DNA. It got passed down to me. A lot of you guys probably might remember, if you're from Erie, uh, Kerner Tool and Die Company up on Gospel Hill, uh, RM Kerner Company, which is uh, still in business. And uh, I had my own place, uh, Kerner Tool and Die, I guess the second version. So back to the intro music, uh, one headlight. Well, when I think about manufacturing, and the words of that song, I feel like we are driving at home on one headlight sometimes. And for you guys that are younger, you know, I don't think headlights burn out like they used to. But when uh, we were driving all those cars back in the 70s, you know, when you're a kid, you buy cars that are 10 years old. And the headlights were always burning out. And you had to make it home some nights on one headlight, which was kind of scary. Well, I kind of feel like manufacturing is in that same boat right now. And um, I don't like it. And that, that's the purpose of this program. This is not a production of WJT. This is a production of yours truly, Phil Kerner. Um, through the help of some patrons and some support, uh, we've been able to buy this radio time to uh, talk about where we're going to go next in Erie. And we're also going to talk a little bit about where we used to be. You know, I'm, I'm a historian. I love manufacturing. I know there's a lot of guys out there and ladies that worked at Mark's Toys, and uh, there was some tremendous industry here. So we're going to get going in just a few minutes, uh, but if you work with your hands, welcome home. This is your program. And as I said the other night, I did a promo on WJT TV. Uh, no affiliation there, but uh, I did a, pro- a promotional piece or an interview on the, on WJT t- television, and I said, you know, the one thing they asked me what you'd learn when you called the program, well, you're going to learn that you're welcome here and you're respected here. And uh, again, with my background in manufacturing and uh, she besides just owning my own shops, but standing on my feet for 10, 12 hours a day. I know what it's like to, to work hard for a, uh, a boss and to get projects done on time. So you're in the right place. So before we go to the phones, a uh, few ground rules. Um, the big thing is I really prefer not to get into politics. And believe me, I enjoy politics as much as the next guy. But uh, we kind of live in a, uh, in a situation right now in this country where we're so divided. Everybody's, uh, I'm not going to convince you. You're not going to convince me. So let's not even go there. And uh, just be respectful. And uh, we'll have a lot of fun with it. I have no problem with um commenting on policies that may be related to politics, you know, because it does all kind of work together, but I'd rather stay um, away from that. So the number here is, if you're from Erie, it's 451-1400. And of course, if you're calling from out of town, um, the area code here is 814. So the full number, 814-451-1400. 
So what I really wanted to open with tonight, and there will be no guests on the program. You are my guests tonight. And I wanted to leave the phone lines open for uh, people that do want to call in and uh, tell me about what you'd like to talk about when you think about manufacturing in general. Is it training? Is it where do we go next? Do you have a good idea? Uh, you know, I'm very pro-business. I support small business. I was a small business owner myself. You know, I have a, a, a line that, you know, when you st everybody starts their own business in their garage or by themselves, but the day you hire that first employee is you're a real business person then because employees bring a whole different uh, set of challenges. And once you have to start get growing your business and hiring more people, um, anybody out there that's listening that's done that, they know what I'm talking about. So let's talk just for a minute. Um, somebody emailed me, and let me see, this is a guy named Dave. And no, I'm sorry, this is Steve. And he said, you've really got to explain to some people that are non-industry type of people to understand that almost everything in their world relies on the machining trades professional. And uh, I could take it from there. And I do want to say, manufacturing, you know, you, everything you use almost every single day it comes from a precision dye or mold. Your toaster, your coffee maker, your hairbrush, your smartphone, all, everything on your car, your whole car. The only reason you can afford those products is because they're mass produced from precision molds and dyes built by the most amazing craftsmen on the planet. It all starts with an initial concept. It might be an inventor uh, that has an idea. Then he's got to get the part designed so it can be manufactured. Once the part's designed, it goes to the next level of building the dye or mold. Then that dye or mold will be designed. Then finally the mold or dye will be built. You know, that used to take us, our lead times used to be, you know, 12 to 14 weeks, and now the customers expect those to be done usually in about six to eight weeks. If you're lucky, I know some are demanding four weeks, so it's gotten a lot more competitive. You know, besides hearing from uh, these other craftsmen, uh, my other goal is to educate those who aren't in manufacturing is what we actually do. And I would tell you, the tool and die makers I've worked with in my life are they're smart, smart guys, highly educated craftsmen. And most of us uh, have served a four-year apprenticeship in the trade to even get started. So the dyes and molds that we know uh, how to produce have just been shipped off to other countries. You know, if we didn't get into the wrong business, those dyes and molds are still being built. And I'm sure that'll come up on this program, uh, how to get some of those back. Um, you know, there's... We all know where they went. The Pacific Rim took over that industry uh, due to the labor costs. And uh, that's the goal of this program is, is to talk about some ideas. So I'm going to have uh, a lot of different guests on the program as we move forward. Uh, local business leaders, um, some politicians that I think might be able to help us, um, the congressmen, uh, if they'll come on. Because I, there are questions that I have, but I know you guys together are a lot smarter than Phil Kerner. And I'm really relying on uh, you folks to help me out with uh, questions to ask these guys or ladies when they come on the program. Uh, here in Erie, we just elected a new mayor. Uh, I think he's been in office for about 10 days, so we'll give him a break for a little bit until he gets his feet wet. But uh, that's the purpose of the program tonight, is to uh, open the phone lines up to your ideas, to talk about the trade, and um, see where, we, where we've been and where we might go next. So um, with that being said, uh, we're going to take just a few minutes here to run a few, uh, uh, I, wanna, I hate to use the word commercials, but these are my sponsors, my patrons that made this show possible, and we'll be back in just a few minutes. Hi, this is Phil Kerner for Working Hands Radio. And for all you entrepreneurs out there or people who've ever started their own business, you know you can have the best idea in the world, but unless you get the support from somebody in the community to step up and say, hey, you know what, that's a great idea, you might never get off the ground. Well, that was certainly the case with Working Hands Radio. And I'm blessed and very thankful tonight to uh, recognize a few people in the local community who saw the vision for this program, and that's the only reason you're listening tonight. So I'd just like to take a moment to, first of all, thank the Rakowski family at Industrial Sales and Manufacturing right here in Erie, a world-class supplier of parts to some of the most demanding customers on the world. ISM's slogan is built in Erie and found around the world. And as we all know, manufacturing has had a real rough time for about the last 10 years or so. And uh, it's a real testimonial to industrial sales that just in 2017, they celebrated 50 years in business.
The next patron I'd like to thank is Jack Martin at Duskus Martin Funeral Home. And for those of you from Erie that know Jack, Jack is very civic-minded, is very much involved in the community, the business community, and charitable foundations and works. Jack does an amazing job up there with your time of need, your time of grief, compassion, professionalism. I can personally highly recommend Duskus Martin Funeral Home. And a big thank you to Jack Martin. I'd also like to take this time to thank another one of our patrons, Mr. Tom Kennedy from Professional Development Associates right here in downtown Erie. For those of you who are from Erie, you already know about Tom's leadership and civic mindedness in the community. We're very blessed and lucky to have a guy like Tom in our midst. And you should also know that Tom will be a guest on this program uh, in the upcoming weeks. And finally, this program is being brought to you with the help and support of small business owners, blue collar guys and gals, and craftsmen from around the world where they donated small amounts on workinghandsradio.com. So to learn more about any of these sponsors, just visit workinghandsradio.com. If you'd like to become a sponsor, my contact information is right there. We'd like to welcome you aboard if your company would benefit from having some local airtime or even some global airtime, uh, depending on the business you own. We'd love to have you on board. That's workinghandsradio.com. All right, so we're going to be back in business here. Callers online, we'll be with you in just a second. Uh, a little help, uh, a little help from my friends and uh, an old Beatles too. And, and there's a great story behind that. And one of the reasons, again, I'm here tonight is a little help some from uh, my friends. And, and the reality is, as I said in that uh, block you just heard, you know, when you start something new, you have a new idea. You know how it is. People look at you like a bug just crawled out of your ear or something, and they, they say they'll wait and see how it goes. But thankfully for those people who uh, jumped in, I really appreciate it. And uh, really, the best thing, uh, the reason I chose that particular song, A Little Help My Friends, I love the story behind it. And apparently in 1967, uh, Ringo had never done a solo for the Beatles, and they wrote that for him. And uh, when it was his turn to sing it, it was at about 5.45 in the morning, he didn't want to do it. They said, well, let's do it tomorrow. And he said, nope. And they rolled the track, and the Beatles uh, all stood next to him for the support to get him through his first song. So I always love that part. So it's great to have those supporters, but I do have uh, a new one to add, and I just didn't have time to put it in on deck for the uh, commercial spot. And uh, this came in last night. And you guys are going to love this one. Uh, this is New England, Burials at Sea. It's an East Coast provider for customized ash scattering memorials and full body burials at sea events. Based in Marshfields, Massachusetts, the company operates year round, coast to coast, serving all faiths with personalized and affordable services for one to 400 passengers. They're properly insured, U.S. Coast Guard licensed, and uses over 84 uh, different vessels departing from 73 ports that are clean and current with the latest safety gear. So they'll do the whole service for you. It includes a captain service, an official ship's parchment, sea burial coordinate certificate, uh, eight bell end of watch blessing with a custom ship's flag, and a 10 gauge, uh, 10 gauge cannon fire farewell salute as the ship circles the flower field. So that is Captain Brad White, and that is New England Burials at Sea. And uh, he'll be up on my website tomorrow. And I have a feeling Captain Brad is listening tonight, and if he runs to workinghandsradio.com, he's not going to see his information there. So, Captain, I appreciate you jumping on board, pardon the pun, but uh, we'll take care of your information for people that have an interest in your service, and uh, they'll be up there tomorrow. So, again, we thank him for that. So, moving forward here. Um, do we have a caller? So, this is our first caller. So, uh, I think we're ready. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Hello? Hello, caller. You're on Working Hands Radio? Well, maybe not. Okay, they may have got tired of waiting. That's totally fine. One more? Okay. Caller, you're on uh, Working Hands Radio. This is Phil Kerner. Hello, Phil Kerner. Hello. Hi. Tom Lipton here. Tom Lipton. Tom, where are you calling hey. from today? I'm calling from Berkeley, California. Berkeley, California. For those of you who don't know Tom... 
Tom is a, a world-class ca uh, craftsman and who has a humongously large YouTube following and he's got a book out um, uh, that he actually sent me a copy of it and uh, it's a tremendous book and it's all about uh, better tips and trades the things to do in the trade to make you better at what you do and I learned a lot from it and I've been doing this for a long time so uh, Tom, can you hear everything okay out there? Is everything coming no, through? No, it's, uh, it's good. And I'm watching the, uh, the feed on Facebook, and uh, it looks pretty good from here. There's a little delay, but that's to be expected. So, uh, yeah, so far so good. So uh, what's your feeling on the trades these days, Mr. Lipton? My feeling? Um, well, actually, uh, um, <laughs> I just, uh, you know, as part of my, uh, my day job, um, I'm in charge of hiring and, uh, uh, and training, uh, new mechanical technicians here for, uh, uh, Lawrence Berkeley lab, which is my day job. And, uh, we just hired a, a crop, a new crop of, uh, mechanical techs. And, you know, it's, it's hard not to be enthusiastic when you, when you meet these people, uh, uh, they're kind of ready to go. And, uh, and it's, uh, I don't know. It feels pretty good uh, to be training new people, right? And uh, as opposed to watching old friends pass away and uh, and knowledge lost, that's, right? That's so, about, but we've got them covered with the uh, burials by C and Duska's Martin Funeral Home here. So we're gonna oh, go. okay, yeah, we're gonna, great. We can, so, uh, we can <laughs> handle that part. You just get them started. Now, with these new positions that you're bringing in, what kind of education are you looking for for a new hire? So um, it's actually kind of um, um, we typically. It's not 100% required, but we're looking for something, a kind of a lower level uh, AS type degree or something in uh, uh, a relevant uh, field, you know, some mechanical field or trade field or something like that. So this would be, uh, you know, equivalent to a couple of years of community college, uh, something like that. Now, a couple of the folks that... Uh, uh, that actually were ultimately hired for these positions. We hired five, which was uh, actually pretty pretty good number for us. Uh, uh, two of them actually have uh, bachelor's degrees uh, in this case, although um, only one of them is, uh, uh, well, actually they're both reasonably relative, relevant because they're, they're scientific uh, uh, degrees. So, And what, what, are these, um, what are these people going to be exactly doing once they're trained? What, what's their job description going to so, be? Yeah, they've been hired as um, uh, mechanical technicians. And so what mechanical technicians do here at, at Berkeley Lab is uh, they uh, are the people that assemble uh, uh, scientific apparatus uh, commission and uh, and do operate these uh, these devices that we build. Uh, they also install them. Uh, we refit them. They do. They're not machinists per se, uh, but they do do some machine work. Uh, they might uh, do. Um, Oh gosh, fiber optic bonding, vacuum systems, uh, electronics. I mean, it's it's a kind of across the board. So. So do you think? Do you think you know, we're we're calling? You know, we're calling to Erie, Pennsylvania. We we've, we've been kind mm -hmm. of decimated here in manufacturing. Uh, yeah. Are you guys pretty optimistic out there? Is there a lot of besides Berkeley Labs where you're at? How's the manufacturing community around you? Well, um, the Bay Area. I, this is the San Francisco Bay Area in California, and uh, it's. I don't know. I would say the the local economy here is pretty pretty strong. There's a lot of um, you know, I don't know, uh, dot commers or in startups and medical and uh, and semiconductor industry. So there's there's a lot going on in the Bay Area. So typically, um, there's a decent demand for uh, for skilled labor. Um, the downside to that is it's extremely expensive to live in this area. So uh, which kind of uh, um, you know, is a little tricky to balance between uh, what what entry level skilled trades kinds of uh, of pay are versus uh, you know what they can afford to uh, what they can afford to rent or live in, right? So uh, you know, and fuel costs are high, and um, you know, grocery costs are high. You know, it's pretty expensive to live here. So yeah, California. You, gotta, you yeah. know, I've been there, love it. But uh, what's what's a gallon of gas cost in Erie, Pennsylvania? Right, that's a good question. I don't even know what I paid last time. Two seventy-five. Two seventy-five. Two seventy-five. Yeah, we're we're three fifty, or you know, 
pushing four bucks depending on what grade you get. So uh, it's uh, yeah, and groceries are high, and so you know a a two thousand square foot uh, uh, three bedroom uh, two bath house rental uh, in a nice area would probably be I don't know four grand something like that a month. Four thousand a month. There you go. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's it's, so. it's, it's not it's, it's it's a lot cheaper than it's here in Erie, Pennsylvania. So, yeah. well, if you, I got a, one question for you before I let you go. Yeah, I, sure. Uh, um, if you had a young man or a young lady that wanted to get into manufacturing today, mm-hmm. um, what would you what would you say? Because you know a lot of people just like to build stuff. They're they're smart. Yeah. They're good with their hands. What uh, career path would you send a a, a a student down if they really insisted on doing this? So if I if if I was gonna you know, and I do get asked this question, and um, um, it's you know, I I tell people if you want a, a trade that's, uh, um, I would say, has a, a lot of potential. Um, honestly, I kind of recommend uh, uh, electrical. Um, it's everything's going to electricity and electrical, and um, the electrical uh, training and unions are still powerful and strong and. Um, and um you know to me that's a key part you know it's well supported and uh there's a lot of work and uh, it's good work um so uh and you know it's i would say tough work to outsource as well which is uh you know some of the problem with with uh, the machining you know, world right Right. Well, the machining world, right? You know, and the the advent of uh, of cheap uh, overnight shipping, right? right? So, I mean, I can ship something to Europe overnight, right? I mean, you know, when you and I were learning, Phil, that that this wasn't even in the cards, right? So uh, there was no FedEx. Uh, I can tell you that, right? Yep. So it's hard to outsource uh, electrical and plumbing and uh, and those kinds of uh, you know and welding, uh, you know, like you know where they would do. Uh, you know, oil refinery stuff and uh, boiler maker, steam fitter, pipe fitter, that kind of stuff, right? It's pretty hard to outsource that to uh, uh, cheap labor, you know, offshore stuff. So, Well, that's, uh, that's good advice from somebody who's got their, definitely has their fingers in the pie out there, and especially uh, with all the work <laughs> you do on YouTube. So if you're listening on Facebook or right here in Erie, uh, just go on YouTube and look up Ox Tool. That's what it is, right, Tom? Ox Tool? Yeah, Ox Tools, yeah. And uh, what do you got, about 500 videos up there now? Yeah, it's about 500. That's yep, right, yep. yeah. And Tom does some uh, incredibly complicated things that are a lot of fun to watch. And the quality of the videos is excellent, too. So I really well, appreciate that, you. Joe. I appreciate you taking the time to call in from sunny California. I don't know Very if you heard good. about what happened to us in Erie. We got, uh, what was it, five oh, You got feet? a little bit of snow, huh? Yeah, five feet of snow <laughs> on Christmas Day. It was uh, between uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. So we're now it's going to hit 51 and, uh, what, tomorrow or the next day. And, the big, oh. the big thaw happens. So, oh boy! All right. Well, All right, again, well, Tom, have a great afternoon at work in sunny California. Okay. And again, thanks for calling in. All right, Phil. We'll see you later. Bye bye. Okay. So, moving forward, uh, just to get you guys uh, involved here, the call in number here is four five one fourteen hundred. If you're out of town, it's eight one four four five one fourteen hundred. We'd love to hear from you about uh, what you think about the trades and what you think about working with your hands and what you think we can make, might do to make. Uh, the trade stronger to make some business come back i'd love to hear your thoughts on that so uh one of the things i want to make sure that we didn't do in the introduction i do have uh, speaking of a little help with uh, from your friend with she's i can't ever say this a little help from your friends song uh, i do have a little help here tonight in the studio and one of my helpers and i mean if you're on uh, line you can see over here is my son nick kerner and he's kind of keeping an eye on the social media end of it with any comments or uh things that people have to say and uh nick why don't you jump in here for a minute and say hi so people know you do have a voice and uh all those beatings i gave you about remaining uh, silent as a child that's true it's very true yeah very true well the first one that jumped out at me was tony wordle saying that you needed the sound of a punch press in the background i guess to add a little bit to the beginning there you know we could probably factor that in there's probably a sound bite out there we could get kyle to do that (laughs) probably yeah Um, and one that's a little bit more interesting, uh, Steve Cook said that $20 million worth of tooling that may have been used to make hundreds of millions or possibly billions worth of products. And I know what he means by that. So when you spend uh, you know, $100,000 to build a mold or a die, that thing's going to run uh, for a long time, and it's going to pump out a lot of products. 
that are going to end up on the shelves. So yeah, he's right. Um, I was very heavily involved in the, in the toy business, and uh, one of the dirty little secrets there when the work started to go to the Orient. Uh, to this day, I could go into a Toys R Us and see some of the stuff is still being marketed 20 years later, some of the stuff I built. And, uh, and they may have built new dies or molds for them now, but uh, it was funny. When I used to charge X to build a mold or a die for a toy car, and I'd see the, the car at, um, at Toys R Us or Toy Store, and it was 19.95. Then when the um, uh, Pacific Rim came in and started doing it for literally 10 cents on the dollar, so instead of spending $30,000 on a mold, they could literally get it built for uh, $3,000. But guess what? When you went back to Toys R Us, how much do you think that car was? Oh, a lot nine, more. Nine, no, it's the same, 1995. But they had saved all that and put it in their pocket. So we kind of shipped off our own work here, and the American people still, still pay the same for what they had. So interesting. So um, also quickly, Nicholas... Uh, you were involved in manufacturing for a very short time in your career. Do you want to talk to us about your uh, time in the shop with Dad there for a little bit? Yeah, it was definitely a learning experience for me. I mean, I never really knew what went into it completely. Um, obviously, being 30 feet away from you every single day, I got to see firsthand what went into it and how many people actually you know, relied on you. It was cool to, for me to see, you know, as your son, you know, uh, just the company dumped things last minute on you, things that were screwed up that need fixed. Um, so it was really cool for me. And I, I learned a lot um, being on your feet all day, working with your hands and making sure everything was done meticulously and correct because everything had to be a match across the, across the board. Otherwise, you know, QC would send it back and you had to start over. The, dreaded, the dreaded call, Nick <laughs> Kerner, QC department, please. You know, I get that call every once in a while. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm doing this for a long time, and I always think my work's perfect. And, you know, guess what? Newsflash, it isn't always perfect. And, you know, I got that call the other day. Phil Kerner, QC, please. <laughs> and I walked by somebody. I said, why after 40 years do I still feel like I'm going to the principal's office? You know, it's just, ugh. So we got it figured out. But, uh, all right, let's go to the phones. Uh, go ahead, uh, caller. You're on Working Hands Radio. Hey, Phil. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How did you feel when I called you to the QC department? Oh, I know who this is. This guy's got, I won't say your whole name. You've got a radio name, though, that's for sure. So uh, anybody that called me to the QC department, but I know you've got a lot of opinions on manufacturing, and I know you've recently moved on, and how's your new position going? Uh, I love it. It's uh, going real well. Um, we do a whole lot of uh, different kind of stuff than what I've done in the past. Um, a lot of aerospace different kind of metals, a uh, lot harder. Um, they do 3D printing, which is something that I, I'd heard of, but I'd never seen before. And that kind of stuff is absolutely amazing. Um, uh, are you familiar with 3D printing yes, at all? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, how that even works is uh, you take somebody a lot smarter than me to figure something like that out. It's, it's a phenomenal, te it's phenomenal technology. It's like magic it almost, isn't it? Right. It's like that. Um, now, how long, have you, yeah. how long have you been in the trade? Uh, I got out of the Navy in 1998, and I started working in Erie in quality control, probably in 1999, and I've been doing that pretty much ever since then. So, I don't know, what is that, 20 years almost? Mm -hmm. And uh, um, what's the reason you ended up in the, um, in the trade? Why did I end up in the trade? Yep, you were in the Navy, right? Right. Uh, I got out, and uh, my actually my family got me a job at a shop here in town. Um, you know, and that's what got me started. They uh, they own a shop here in town, and did that for a couple of years. Went to school, got an associate degree in electronics engineering, and uh, have just built on that from there. Now you think about that last caller. I don't know if you listen to Tom. Uh, it was interesting because his advice for anybody would be uh, leaning towards working in some sort of a, in the trades or manufacturing was to get into the electronics and electrical side of it because that stuff, uh, there seems to be a real need for that. Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, all right, you have all these CNC machines in a shop. You're not going to send one to China to have somebody work on it. You're going to have somebody come into your shop to fix it for you. Um, you know, they can't... Uh, they can do a lot of stuff, but they can't do everything. Uh, one thing, one 
I, I don't want to get negative on you on your first show. Um, the the places that I see that I see doing better um, are ones that do things that not everybody else can do. Uh, if you get, there are certain things that are easier to do that lots of people do, and it seems to me like the places that do that aren't doing as well as the more specialized areas. You understand what I'm I, saying? Oh, I totally know what you're saying. And, you know, the, the biggest issue with that, I mean, it's, it's a double-edged sword for sure because, you know, um, it's great to get started in business. And, you, you know, when, when we all start, we end up buying used equipment that we can afford, but so does everybody else. And the trick is to, to get into the next level where you're buying equipment that other people can afford and you're in a new market and uh absolutely because if you just have a shop full of regular cnc machines anymore so does everybody else right 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 so you, and uh yeah i mean if there's 10 shops in the area that can do the turning on one thing but you have you know a shop that can do you can um 3d print your own casting and then machine it you're 10 steps ahead of the ones that can't you know so, so uh, uh, any advice for people out there tonight that are uh yeah they got a son or a daughter and they this kid might not want to go to college right away and that's okay and they so, you know i really like to work in a shop and you know i know you've got opinions i know that's why uh, i'm not surprised you well, called in so what do you think i would not recommend somebody come right out of high school and go right into a shop okay. um there's plenty of people out there already that can stand there and push a start button. Um, I'm big on education. Get some kind of education. Don't necessarily go to college, but uh, do something. I have a 17-year-old son right now, and uh, he's going to be graduating next year, and I encouraged him to get into, uh, he's going up to tech here doing um, construction trades. Now, he'll probably, he'll finish that out, maybe go into the military. He's looking at the Air Force. Hopefully, maybe do that in the military. So now he has education from the private sector at a pretty good school. To go to that, take what he's going to get in three years of high school, it probably cost him about $30,000, and he's getting it for free through the public education system. Right. He's going to go into the military, get hands-on, and more training. And by the time he's done, if he only does four years in the military, he's going to get out at 22 years old with seven years of training and experience as still a very young kid can do anything he wants with his life. So you've uh, done a nice job of planning out his next seven years, it sounds like. Uh, Well, hopefully if he sticks to it. I mean, if I could go back and do it again, that's what I would do. Well, that's the stuff. Yeah. I, that's the stuff I love to hear. That's the most important part of this program is people passing on just things like you just said. Because again, uh, I think the person, the, the average person listening to this program, is a craftsman, is a tradesperson, uh, has been around the block and seen better days in this trade. And uh, everybody, uh, you know, any piece of advice we get, and I love it when people say, "And here's what I would have done differently." So I really appreciate you being honest about that, and, and they also really appreciate uh, you taking the time to call us in uh, to call in tonight it's really awesome really appreciate your insight yeah phil i'm excited for you congratulations on the show i appreciate it please call in again and keep listening okay all right have a good evening very good thank you so much so uh we're going to take another just a uh, two minute break here and collect our thoughts and papers and get ready for the last push for the rest of the show and uh one more reminder uh, the call-in number here, 814-451-1400. I know you guys have opinions. We want to hear them. I'm Phil Kerner. This is Working Hands Radio. Hi, this is Phil Kerner for Working Hands Radio. And for all you entrepreneurs out there or people who have ever started their own business, you know you can have the best idea in the world. But unless you get the support from somebody in the community to step up and say, hey, you know what, that's a great idea, you might never get off the ground. Well, that was certainly the case with Working Hands Radio. And I'm blessed and very thankful tonight to uh, recognize a few people in the local community who saw the vision for this program, and that's the only reason you're listening tonight. So I'd just like to take a moment to, first of all, thank the Rakowski family at Industrial Sales and Manufacturing right here in Erie, a world-class supplier of parts to some of the most demanding customers on the world. 
ISM's slogan is built in Erie and found around the world. And as we all know, manufacturing's had a real rough time for about the last 10 years or so. And uh, it's a real testimonial to industrial sales that just in 2017, they celebrated 50 years in business. The next patron I'd like to thank is Jack Martin at Duskus Martin Funeral Home. And for those of you from Erie that know Jack, Jack is very civic-minded, is very much involved in the community, the business community, and charitable foundations and works. Jack does an amazing job up there with your time of need, your time of grief, compassion, professionalism. I can personally highly recommend Duskus Martin Funeral Home and a big thank you to Jack Martin. I'd also like to take this time to thank another one of our patrons, Mr. Tom Kennedy from Professional Development Associates right here in downtown Erie. For those of you who are from Erie, you already know about Tom's leadership and civic mindedness in the community. We're very blessed and lucky to have a guy like Tom in our midst. And you should also know that Tom will be a guest on this program uh, in the upcoming weeks. And finally, this program is being brought to you with the help and support of small business owners, blue collar guys and gals, and craftsmen from around the world where they donated small amounts on WorkingHandsRadio.com. So to learn more about any of these sponsors, just visit WorkingHandsRadio.com. If you'd like to become a sponsor, my contact information is right there. We'd like to welcome you aboard if your company would benefit from having some local airtime or even some global airtime, uh, depending on the business you own. We'd love to have you on board. That's WorkingHandsRadio.com. And we are back in downtown Erie. And uh, again, if you didn't hear the beginning of the program, it's a real blast to be broadcasting right here from the Boston store in the heart of downtown Erie. And uh, I always thought of uh, that song, Petula Clark, uh, as a little of a tribute to my dad, Fritz. We grew up with a lot of Petula Clark and Andy Williams in the house. And uh, I always really enjoyed that song. It's a nostalgic song for me, and especially since tonight we happen to be in downtown area. I have been informed there's a little static coming in and out on the Facebook feed. Uh, that is out of my control. And uh, if I can do anything about that in further broadcast, I will. Um, I can assure you that the, the uh, program tonight is definitely being recorded. And it'll be turned into a, a podcast, which should be available in the next day or so at workinghandsradio.com. Again, my name's Phil Kerner. You're listening to Working Hands Radio. Um, the call-in number here is 814-451-1400. I think we have some open lines yet. So uh, we're going to go back to Nick Kerner with a little bit of what's going on on social media. And he's monitoring this for us on Facebook Live. Yeah, there's definitely a couple to get to here. Um uh, I know the first one you can definitely relate to from Joel. And he said, when I see plastic parts in the store, I look at the parting lines and ejector pin fit, especially products I made the molds for. Love the trade. Lots of satisfaction. And that makes sense. If you're a mold maker, uh, that's the first thing uh, you look at. That's the parting line is where the edges of the part are formed. And the ejector pins are the uh, pins that push the part out of the mold. And if they're worn out, they'll be... Uh, uh, what we call flash just ragged edges around them so if you're a mold maker that makes perfect sense so that was joel mm -hmm. okay thanks joel and then dudley said we need to push for more apprenticeship programs you know um that's a good point apprenticeship programs i'm actually the apprentice supervisor of uh the place i work at um, industrial sales and um we have one apprentice and it's a state-run apprenticeship and it's a lot different than the one that i took and uh, I'm fighting with, uh, not the company at all, but uh, the, um, the hierarchy that runs this program. The way it used to work here in Pennsylvania um, is that you completed four years, 8,000 hours of training, plus your night school. And uh, your night school was paid for by the company as long as you got good grades. So if you got an A, they paid for the whole thing. A B, they paid for a little less of it. A C, a little less. And I think it's a D and less than you were on your own. But... Um, so our apprentice is going to night school, but we've got um, a thing we're, we're doing competency-based training, which I'm not sure I'm, in, I'm liking yet. Um, there seems to be, um, how do I want to put this, no urgency to get stuff done. So as long as you finally get it done and it's competent, right. you pass. 
And um, that's not how real life works, right? I mean, uh, you know, you either take a class in college or high school or you pass it or you flunk it. I mean, let's face it. There's some classes in high school that I could have tested out of when I was 13, and there's some classes in high school I'd still be there if they were waiting for me to be competent. Right. <laughs> so um, that's a good point. Uh, uh, apprenticeships, and we can talk about more of that, and I will certainly get some guests on here that could uh, enlighten all of us with apprenticeships and training. And you know what? That goes for all the trades. Uh, it doesn't just have to be tool and die making. I'm sure there's carpentry apprenticeships and cabinet making and plumbing, and I, those guys are all welcome here. So... Uh, let's go to the phones and hello caller you're on uh, Working Hands Radio this is Phil Kerner Phil this is the first time I've heard your program could you tell me a little bit about your program how long you've been on and why you don't have any uh, commercials well on letting people know you're on okay a couple things with that um, so you asked a few things there how long have we been on the air um, we have been on the air for 42 two minutes so far. This is our first program. That's, that's A, why you haven't heard about it, uh, or as of yet. I believe WJT, some people have stopped me. They are running promos for the program uh, throughout the day, 15-second spots to promote the program. And I was also on WJT TV the other night to promote the program. So we're slowly moving forward with the program, but uh, the reality is... Uh, this is a brand new concept, kind of what we're doing here, a, a, a show in Erie for the trades and a show that's actually being broadcast, uh, you know, literally around the globe. And I do want to clear that up. If any of you guys are kind of snickering about that from Erie, uh, because of the work I do online as the tool and die guy and for doing it for seven years, um, I do have subscribers from uh, around the world. And they are, if they have Facebook tonight, they can comment as nick has been uh, reading some of the comments and they can, if they have a phone they can pick the phone up and call in so did i answer all your questions or is there a few more there that i missed yes yeah, so are you are you going to be on uh, just weekly uh, or every night or this how, for how, the, the, the pilot program is for the next 12 weeks every tuesday night from seven to eight very good uh now are you trying to encourage uh listeners to uh uh take advantage of some of the programs in the Erie area or uh, just generic, uh, you know, tool and die or, or uh, what, what have you? Well, as I just um, said, what I'd like to do, again, this was our first program, and I don't know if you've been listening to the whole program or not, um, and that's fine, but the, the, the point I made earlier was this first program, I kind of just held off on the guests because I can get a, a lot of different people. I know a lot of different people in education and the trades that can come in and talk about different ideas. But I wanted on this first program to kind of get the pulse of the people who were calling in to see what they might have an interest in doing. So I am always open to suggestions. And if you just go to uh, workinghandsradio.com, there's a contact button on there. You can email me and love to hear your ideas. That's what they, that, Again, that's why I'm here. Uh, nobody wants to listen to, to Phil Kerner for a complete hour. Uh, I couldn't listen to myself for an hour. So the, the, the reason I opened it up to the talk radio format was to hear from the listeners. That's what I really am doing. Oh, this, okay, I, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you with a quick uh, quick idea. The New York County Public Library, a Blasco uh, division uh, down on the Bayfront, has a uh, learning lab down there. And they have a 3D printer. I have, I, I've been meaning to go down there and check it out. But uh, how important is the 3D printer technology in reference to the, the new revolution in, in uh, working hands? You know, um, that's a great question. Here's what we used to do. Back in the day, back in the 90s, this new technology came out. It was called, and I, I'm going to butcher this name out. I think it was called Stereo Lithography. Uh, SLA models is all I know we were, we were shorthand yeah, how they, that's, that's how they do uh, integrated circuit boards okay well back then they were using them to do prototypes and it was pretty amazing very expensive now I believe the 3D printers are actually do uh, uh, a lot better job and almost anybody can afford to buy one I mean seriously I mean a small one's not that expensive so I think right now they're a great way because in the old days you, if you had a, several different parts, you'd have to have several different uh, prototype molds built to only find out, wow, this doesn't work like we thought it would. Revamp all the molds, try it again. Well, now you can 3D print this stuff off, and I think the big deal with the 3D printing, and I'm not sure how big these things get as far as size. I don't know if you can pr 3D print a car, right? But um, the, the, the better that technology gets, it's, it saves the engineering time. What they can think of, 
they can create right at their desk, basically. So you're right. I uh, I would say uh, at my age, I skipped that part. I've heard a lot about it. I've seen one work kind of slow, but you don't you're not supposed to stand there and watch them. You're supposed to you know dump the information into it and go and do something else. But um, well, if you check out YouTube, they have uh, uh, colleges and universities that are actually working on 3D printers that build houses. Uh, <laughs> do cement work. It, it, it really depends on the type of application. And uh, the, uh, I mean, they have, they're actually building houses, sort of like an igloo type uh, oh, okay, I get you. structure. Okay. Excellent. Well, hey, listen, I really appreciate your call. And you're from Erie? Yes. Okay. yes. I'm, I'm retired and uh, I, uh, I'm a voracious reader and I, I really enjoy uh, uh, and the reason I know about the three D printers is because uh, you go to the uh, library. A lot, of the, a lot of the companies have uh, come under uh, the, their sales have dropped lately, and I wanted to know if it's a that's a viable technology for the future or just a fad. For now, it looks like it's got a lot of staying power. I haven't heard a bad word about it, but I will write that down and do some research on it. So I really appreciate you taking the time to call in tonight. All right, I'll be listening. All right, thank care. you, thank you. So you know, with that being said. Uh, if you just joined us, uh, Working Hands Radio, my name's Phil Kerner, and this is a, a bit of a new concept for uh, Erie, Pennsylvania. First of all, I believe we're the only live talk radio program on right now in Erie, Pennsylvania. You know, most of the live talk radio here on 1400 especially is in the morning, and uh, through some good luck and uh, some hard work, we were able to get this nighttime slot, and uh, and I do appreciate the getting back to the theme tonight, a little help from your friends. Um Joe Lang and the whole staff here. Uh, this has taken quite a while to put this together and how to get this on to Facebook Live. So um, with that being said, uh, Nick, back to my son, Nick Kerner. He's kind of on the board of social media. Anything else going on on that end? Yeah, Greg said that the automobile industry is booming in Alabama and Georgia. We need skilled tool makers here, not just die maintenance. And what he means by that is, um, you know, it's one thing to just be able to... Um, tear apart a mold or die that's maybe a little tired and resurface it but to start from scratch you, it's a different skill set right mm -hmm. okay and tony said a couple here uh first one was job shop job shops get manual training or training on old equipment in repair could be a good place to start out of high school and he said if you can turn a thread you can do just about anything on a lathe okay good thought and anything else there mr kerner yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people chiming in, but somebody said, as a 21-year-old working in the trades, machining and welding, it's very cool to hear. I mean, a lot of people are happy that you're, you're doing this show. Well, you know, a um, little background on that. Uh, one of the reasons I did this program is, uh, I hope I'm not being redundant here, was uh, that when I do all these training videos on on YouTube, you know, it started uh, seven years ago, this January, it was 2011, and. Um, I actually, what happened that day, I, 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 I'd taken apart to the QC department, and um, they called me in, the dreaded call, and there was an angle. There was an angle on this part, and they said the angle's wrong. Well, I said, how'd you check it? And I told them they really needed to check it with a, um, how, I'll just get technical here for a second. I'm trying not to do that, but with a sign bar. Well, they didn't know what a sign bar was, so that night, I had my wife film me at the dining, at the kitchen table with a sign bar and a set of gauge blocks and showed people how to use a sign bar. Well, that was seven years ago, and you know, I put that video up there, and I wasn't much of a YouTuber back then, but I thought it'd be fun, and I put it up there, and I said something in that video I think I'll always regret. At the end of the video, I was just having fun with it, and I said, and I'm Phil Kerner, the world's greatest tool and die maker. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was my first induction into so, uh, social media and getting beat up. I was, you know, lack of sense of humor, I guess, from some of the people. But anyways, the video sat there for you know, a month, 30 views, and two months, 100 views. All of a sudden, I looked at it one day, it had 11,000 views. So I jumped online, and I, I, could, I taught myself website design. I saw, thought the, if the tool and com is available, and it was. So I bought the tool and com as a domain, and then I started recording videos. And I had 10, then I had 20, then I had 50, then I had 100, then I had 150, then I had 250. So right now I've got uh, 350 training videos that I've done in the last seven years. Uh, some of them are free on YouTube. The rest of them are all locked up in the what I call the tool room vault at the tool and die guy .com. And, um, 
You know, there's some people who get a little upset with me that I charge for those lessons, but I believe you should have to invest a little bit in your education. Um, I think it means more to people when you just invest a li little bit. Uh, I think 350 videos for what I charge, I think it comes down to 18 cents a lesson or something. So I think we're, we've got that covered. So um, quickly, a few things also to wrap up with uh, tonight. When I think about uh, the trade as it is now, and I know a lot of people are like, hey, old man, you know, get used to it. Manufacturing's done. Computers do everything. I hear the word automation thrown around a lot. You know, skilled labor, really skilled labor, has never been replaced by automation. And I get it. The uh, it's, As one caller just said, you know, if you're going to stand there and press a button all day, yeah, you could probably be replaced. But if you're going to be trained and, uh, uh, and, and invest in a career, there'll always be room for talented craftsmen. Now, I don't want to jinx myself tonight, but, you know, I started my apprenticeship in 1979. And, and since that day, I have never been without a job in my entire life. I have never been laid off. I have never been fired. I have never, you know, and we'll talk about it on this show. There's, it's not just because I'm, quote, unquote, uh, the world's greatest tool in die America. I can assure you that's not true. Uh, I worked with some, a lot of really smart guys during my career. But there's certain things you can do to ensure you keep your job or at least you're the last person there and I've got a lot of um, what do I want to call it uh, tenants a lot of basics that I adhere to I try my best I like to be an asset to the company I work for um, I want them to feel the really feel really bad if I ever left and even at my age now it's really important to me every day to make sure the company I work for knows that my job matters to me and I want them to know that by the way I act the work I do and, uh, and I, maybe that's got something to do with my uh, longevity in the manufacturing trade that's been bludgeoned here in Erie, Pennsylvania. So that's uh, kind of my two cents on that. So back to um, a couple other things, too, as we're wrapping up tonight. You know, when you think about what we're doing now with computers and CNC machines, think about, like, my dad's generation. You know, I was looking at a toy train, a Mark's toy train. Um, and I put some pictures of that on the Tool and Die Guy on Facebook. And... The details in this mold to build this little toy train are amazing. All the little rivets, all the little uh, things that are pushed into the, uh, or uh, machined into these cavities and these cores for this mold, all done manually, right? Nobody had CNC machines. Well, it gets even better. Nobody had a calculator. So when you had a triangle, you know, you, you got your trig book out and did it longhand. And um, those are the guys I learned from. So I was really, really lucky, really blessed in this trade. I got in towards the end of what we would call the manual area, where we did everything, you know, on manual machines, and then the CNC machines started coming in. So I learned from the masters how to do it the old way, which served me very, very well when the new uh, machinery and things like that came in. Uh, it was like, in fact, I, you know, I, I jokingly say running some of these machines um, is like stealing. It's made my job so much easier. So I guess uh, we're going to start wrapping up program number one and uh i really do appreciate uh we've had some really good feedback tonight from uh nick at facebook anything else going on there are we all quieted down there no I'm, it's been pretty consistent um joseph said that suggest you talk about who makes all the robots and throw people out of work and where the equilibrium point might be <laughs> okay <laughs> we'll do an expose on robots Maybe we'll have a robot come to the studio. Yeah. So what, what happened? No, wait. What would happen with the robot steal my job? Your job would be to fix the robots. That's what Howard okay, said. That's, that was that's, his. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, well, I, actually, Howard chimed in about the 3D printers, too. And he said, as far as I know, most items that are 3D printed still need machined. He said okay. he wasn't sure if he knows everything about it, though. So. Well, a, a unique opportunity has presented itself to me over the last month or so. I'm still working on it. But uh, Barron College is putting together a, a division of Penn State University here uh, a new certification program for uh, entry-level machinists, and they want me to get involved in that. Well, I told them the only reason I would get involved in that, yeah, I love to teach, but to be involved a little bit with that Penn State mm -hmm. because I know they've got some really great yeah. high-tech stuff out there. So there will be more to come on that pretty soon uh, uh, you'll hear from me uh, as I uh, move through my career here on the radio and at the industrial sales and manufacturing and at the tool and die guy .com, I guess I might as well add uh, 
professor at Gannon or at Penn State University. I think that would that would be just right. I wouldn't make them call me Mr. Kerner. Though. I would make them call me Mr. Phil Kerner. So. <laughs> For the second episode. For yeah. the second episode. Uh, yeah. So we had some good comments tonight that uh, came in tonight uh, on social media. Uh, this was a big experiment tonight to see if we could actually broadcast a talk radio show from downtown Erie at WJET and get it through uh, the internet onto Facebook. And then we could also get the local audience involved through the just the regular radio station here on the, the way you'd normally listen to a the channel is just turn on your dial. So I think we accomplished both that those. Um, next week I've got some guests I'm going to have on some local I believe uh, I still have to firm it up but we're going to have some kids on here that are doing some robotics and some design from a fantastic program uh, here in Erie. And what we're going to do is. Uh, Talk about bringing new blood into the, the, the trade and the new blood into manufacturing. And that's the way we do that. You know, I told these kids that I met with a, um, about a month or two ago at this uh, robotic thing. And they were awesome. It was really fun to watch what they were doing. But I told them, I said, you know, I, when I was talking to them, I said, don't be afraid to, to say you're having fun doing this. Because building stuff is fun. And if you're bent that way... You, you won't be satisfied until you tinker with something or fix it or create it from scratch. And, uh, you know, I, I had like five teenagers around me, right? And they're all staring at me because nobody wanted to be the first one to talk. I said, don't worry about being a nerd in front of your friends. If you're doing this stuff, you're already a nerd. <laughs> Embrace the nerdness within you because, you know, robots it's and that over. stuff, that's going to be the world. So uh, what do we got on uh, time here? A minute, 30 seconds. Well, I would like to thank... Nick Kerner for helping me out tonight. Nick is here because he thought I was going to pay him. <laughs> and uh, also, uh, Kyle, my new friend here at Connoisseur Media for handling the technical side, the board side. And I'll end with this. And this used to be printed on the back door at Ants and Tools and Gauges. If you work for a man in heaven's name, work for him, speak well of him, and stand by the institution he represents. Remember, an ounce of loyalty is worth a pound of cleverness. If you must growl, condemn, and eternally find fault, resign your position and when you're on the outside damn him to your heart's content but as long as you're a part of that institution do not condemn it if you do the fair side wind that comes along will blow you away and you probably will never know why this is phil kerner working hands radio we'll see you next tuesday night